pocket, lots of time. Pass intercepted, and water. The Raiders and Broncos, a rivalry that stood the test of time. Here it comes, and Elway gets away from it. This year's no different, as the Silver and Black come to town with Marshawn Lynch and Khalil Mack leading the way. Guys like that tend to make a difference. We just gotta make sure we keep them under control a little bit. You know, Marshawn, he's, he's definitely beast mode. They call him that for a reason. We have a one-on-one -on -one with Vance Joseph, plus Steve Atwater has his keys to the game. This is a must win for both of us. You know, this is gonna be a, a good challenge for us. It's gonna be fun. It's an AFC West showdown. The Broncos TV pregame show starts right now. A beautiful fall day in the Mile High City for some football. Both the Broncos and Raiders are looking to bounce back after losses from a week ago. And even though it's early in the season, there's a lot riding on this one in terms of the AFC West standings. Hello and thank you for joining us for the Broncos TV pregame show brought to you by Microsoft. I'm Phil Milani. We have a great show, show in store for you, but first some, stat, some sad news from earlier this week as former Broncos head coach Red Miller passed away at the age of 89. Miller was elected to the Broncos Ring of Fame earlier this year in May, this being the 40th anniversary of the 1977 Super Bowl season. During his four seasons, Miller delivered the first division title, first playoff berth, and of course, first Super Bowl appearance in franchise history. And now with me, Broncos legend, Billy Thompson. Of course, you played with Miller. What kind of man was, was Red? Red was a great man. He was a great coach, uh, a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, and I think he came in uh, the year that we needed exactly that. And um, he pushed us all the way across the line. We've heard some stories about Red that, you know, when he talked and he told stories, everybody would listen. What was he like to play for? He was an amazing guy. I mean, he only asked for your best. I mean, if you made a mistake, he, he, would, he would let it go. But as long as you were trying hard and giving it your all, he was fair. And that's what I loved about him. What was any good stories you have from that <laughs> uh, 1977 Super Bowl run? Well, probably I couldn't tell here, but uh, <laughs> but no, he he hated the Raiders. <laughs> it was one game he he really looked forward to, and uh, uh, he he was so excited when we beat the Raiders twice that year, and to go on to the Super Bowl, it was amazing. What was that AFC Championship game like then, huh? It was incredible. <laughs> it was the first time the Broncos had ever done anything, and being a part of that for me was just unbelievable. What was your relationship like with uh, Red of these past few years here? Well, you know, Red has already, he's been a, a, a coach, he's been a mentor to me. Uh, I knew he was sick, and so I just tried to keep an eye on him and see how he was doing, but uh, just incredible individual. Well, thank you very much, Billy, for joining us to talk about Red. Uh, Miller's family has asked that in lieu of flowers that people send donations to his alma mater. That's Western Illinois. So uh, instead of flowers, send uh, some donations to his alma mater there. Now we turn back to football. Let's check in with the guys as they made their way into the stadium. Man, hey, big, big day, big game. You know, I, I used to be a Raider. We got to go out there and tear them up, you know? Hey. Ground and pound, that's all that matters today. Hey, I don't got nothing much, man. Division game at home, must win. Ready to go play ball, man. Division game, got to win at home. Take care of business, man. You got to get this stuff. Get the Raiders. I'm always ready for the Raiders. Division game, you got to be ready. It's good to be back home. Uh, divisional game back in uh, Mile High, so excited to be here. The guys are ready for a big game here today. The Broncos have won 9 of 11 against the Raiders, and of course that's across a span where the Broncos won five consecutive AFC West titles. For more, let's check in with Matt Boyer, who's one-on-one -on -one with head coach Vance Joseph. Coach, you get an Oakland Raiders opponent with some balance and big weapons on both sides of the ball. When you get an opponent like that, what do you try and stress to the guys in the, in the week leading up? Offensively, um, this is probably the best five skill guys that we face all year. You know, and what you stress is details because obviously um, our, our game plan is going to help us take care of those weapons along with our individual play. So what you stress is details and focus. When you get the Raiders week, like the one that we've, we have coming up, it's a divisional opponent, you said, but it's also a home divisional game, so it's, it's, it's worth a lot. When you see something like that on the schedule, does it kind of 
do you see an intensified focus from your guys? Do you do you see kind of the, the level move up a little bit? Yes, it you know it should be because it counts for two for us. It's it's a divisional game, also a home game. So absolutely, the, the intensity, the focus should go up. Coach, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. And joining us now is Broncos senior reporter Andrew Mason with his matchup of the game. And I have a feeling it has to do with the reigning NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, you have to start <laughs> there. And if you've watched the Broncos Raiders games the last few years, you know what Khalil Mack has done and you know what kind of havoc he can wreak. He's had seven sacks against the Broncos over the course of his career. Of course, those seven sacks all came in two games, both Raiders wins. So when Khalil Mack doesn't have a sack against the Broncos, then there's 4 0. When he has at least one sack, and he had two sacks against them in a game last year in Oakland and five sacks back in December 2015 here in Denver, the Broncos are 0 2. So there you go. Keep Khalil Mack out of Trevor Simeon's face and you've got a good chance of winning. Uh, I think Brock Osweiler probably told Trevor Simeon about that second <laughs> half where Mack had five sacks mm -hmm. against the Broncos. Him and Bruce Irvin have combined for 18 sacks last season. Yeah. What can the Broncos do to combat that? Well, the thing is, because you have to worry about both Mack and Irvin, you can't simply chip chip on Mack's side all the time. So sometimes you're going to have to go one-on-one, -on -one, either Garrett Bowles, or Menelik Watson against Khalil Mack. So some of it's going to be getting the ball out quickly. So maybe you get the screen game going. You know, maybe it's your know, quick interior targets. Maybe you get the tight ends involved uh, like you did back in, in week one. Uh, maybe Benny Fowler as an inside target gets uh, some opportunities. So there are things you can do, getting the ball out fast. And also the running game, get that going as well. There are things you can do to counter Khalil Mack, but certainly a very tough player to deal with today for the Broncos yeah. and any team that faces him. And that's some of the things we saw the Washington Redskins do a week ago and had a lot of success there. Mm -hmm. Trevor Simeon sacked nine times through the first three games of the season. Mace, thank you very much for joining us. You can find Mace on Orange and Blue 760 Monday through Friday for first and 10 at 10. That's 10 to noon every weekday. Also at Mace Denver on Twitter or on DenverBroncos.com, even on the Broncos YouTube page. Be sure to check that out. Now, let's hear from the men tasked with slowing down the Raiders pass rush. You know where he is every time you break the huddle. You know, you, you, you're not going to miss him. He's, he's not going to sneak up on you. You know, 52 is on the right side. He's on the left side. You know um, where he's going to be, and, you know, he'll get a lot of attention. You always look out there, and where's 52, okay? You know, what do we need to do? And um, are we helping him? Is he single blocked? Are there certain progressions you have to do? And you got to have a good mix, you know, so he never knows what's coming. The Broncos have a pretty good pass rusher of their own with two and a half sacks today. Von Miller would tie Carl Mecklenburg for second, second most in franchise history. Let's once again check in with Matt Boyer, who's standing by in the Broncos locker room. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, good to be back in the home locker room after going on the road in Buffalo last week. The equipment staff behind me making their last-minute adjustments before today's game. Now, the big storyline coming in, as most everybody knows, Michael Crabtree going to be out for the Oakland Raiders during this one. So that means on the defensive side of the ball for the Broncos, a lot of opportunities for those Broncos defensive backs like Akib Tlaib, Bradley Roby, Chris Harris, those guys on the outside. They can manage to shut things down on the outside. It's going to open up a lot of opportunities on the edges for guys like Shaq Barrett and Vaughn Miller. On the offensive side of the ball, we heard a lot this week about turnovers. The Broncos want to try and limit those turnovers this week that they had last week in Buffalo. Look for them to establish the run game early. Guys like C.J. Anderson, Jamal Charles. Charles, of course, having that great touchdown run last week. Look for him to build off of that, open things up for the Broncos in the passing game. Keep it tuned to DenverBroncos.com after today's game as well. Phil Milani and myself will be live inside the Broncos locker room with live reaction on Periscope and Twitter. We'll also have head coach Vance Joseph and Trevor Simeon at the podium. But for now, Phil, we'll send it back to you on the field. Thank you very much, Matt. And if the offense gets going today, this could be a big day for Demarius Thomas with just 60 yards receiving. He'll become the seventh active player to reach 8,000 yards receiving in his career. Now let's check in with Broncos insider Steve Atwater for his keys to the game. Thanks, Phil. And here are the keys to the game. First key, win the turnover battle. Dating back to 2012, the Broncos have won 30 consecutive games when winning the turnover battle. To the Broncos, winning the turnover battle means winning football games. The second key contained Khalil Mack. In a late December game in 2015, 
Khalil Mack terrorized the Broncos' offense with five sacks. The Broncos need to know where Khalil Mack is on each and every play and make sure that they account for him. The third key is our wide receivers beating man-to-man -man coverage. The Raiders will need to play some man-to-man -man coverage today, and when they do, our offensive wide receivers need to make sure they make them pay for it by beating them off the line of scrimmage and also going up and catching the ball at its highest point to make big plays for this offense. Back to you, Phil. All right, Steve, you can catch Atwater on Orange and Blue 760 for first and 10 at 10. That's Monday through Friday from 10 to noon and also on Good Morning Broncos Country on the Broncos YouTube page. We're back here field side now with Matt Boyer. And once again, this Broncos defense faces yet another tough test in Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, Lynch has definitely generated headlines with his dancing on the sideline, his antics in his press conference. But he's played very well in that first game. He had over 15 carries, almost 100 yards on the ground. Since then, though, he's kind of, they've kind of dialed him back. It's almost like a the way the Broncos used Jamal Charles, right? Kind of in unique situations, short down yardage. But he's been very effective. He's definitely re-energized this Raiders offense and I think like you mentioned he's a dangerous guy he's got to be dealt with he's an emotional leader for sure for the Raiders only 36 touches through three weeks but when he gets it boy he sure is effective huh yeah especially between the tackles right I mean we talked to a bunch of the guys who played against Lynch this week when he was with the Seahawks and it's the same guy right the same tough runner between the tackles on the edges he can find space I mean he's a huge man but he can definitely find the holes, squeeze into those tight spaces, and go for long yards. I, I think that if the Broncos don't wrap him up on the first one, he can get into that second level very easily. Yeah, one of those guys we talked to, Von Miller, he said he knows that you can't let Lynch turn into beast mode. You know, you just got to get on the ground. I remember um, there was one time where I, I tried to tackle him, Seattle Seahawks, and I had him behind the line. It was like a yard, and I had him like, uh, I think I had like one leg, and he just like, he like drug me for the next two and got the first down. So you just gotta you just gotta get him on the ground. Usually you, you get a, when you get a, a running back like that, you know he'll just fall. But you know Marshawn, he's he's definitely beast mode. They call him that for a reason. All right, well, we're getting a little bit closer to kickoff now, so let's wrap up the show. Matt, your final thought. I think that the Broncos defensive backs need to kind of be on their A game today, especially with Michael Crabtree being out. I think that if you give Vaughn Miller and Shaq Barrett on the edges, if you give them time to get to Derek Carr, it could be a big day for the Broncos. Yeah, you know Carr is itching to come back with a bounce-back game after the game he had last week against Washington. I have two final thoughts. One, protect the football. We know that the Broncos, when they win the turnover battle, they've won 30 consecutive games yep. There. And then another thing, run the football. Yeah. We saw them get away from that a little bit in that second half against the Bills. If you can run the football and play this Bronco the way this offense is supposed to play, that'll really slow down the Raiders' pass rush. Okay, well, that is going to do it for us. We'll be live again post-game inside the locker room and also live at the podium. Until then, thank you so much. This has been the Broncos TV pregame show brought to you by Microsoft.